Childhood memories, I remember I was well beaten. Not because I was that stubborn, but because my parents, um, they are trainers, they are tutors. So, and then they, they believe that you instill discipline when uh, the best time to instill discipline is when in a, a person, is when the person is very young, growing up. And I later discovered that too um, in one of my MBA courses back then, that um, there is a time growing up between age two and um, that of five or seven there about. It's called operant conditioning. You decide what you become in the future, who you become, then you decide. You could be trained and discipline can, you can have, form a pattern for living. And then I assume some position of leadership too early, right from primary school. So those are the things I could remember. And then I was put to some rigorous process, not because there weren't um, availability of some resources, but my parents and people around me just decided to be so. I was exposed to some things too early, like taking care of our last born, the family, the first born, the only son out of three, and then five years plus older than our last born. So you can imagine what her age is now. She's 35 plus. So I was the one that took care of her uh, where she was baby. So you can imagine, five-year-old boy, a six-year-old boy, taking care of a baby, or seven-year-old boy taking care of a baby. Um, those things I can't forget. I can't forget the sins. I can't forget the complaints I made to my mother, which she too can't forget, because she went for a course at some point. And in those days, nannies and housemaids were not that common, you know. So I took responsibility early took responsibility early to learn how to cook. My parents, it's all around training. Before I was eight years old, I started cooking, cleaning, washing. There are basic things. The another memory is I remember that they will give you books to start solving mathematics. That's why I like calculations. My mind is very analytical. To start solving mathematics, and then they know you will not finish in those days, those mathematics, the textbooks, you solve them inside. So they say from page so so to, so to page so so so. So your mates will be rolling tires outside. You know, back then we used to roll tires. We used to, there are some games that are just local common games among um, young guys, young, you know, boys. And then I won't be able to be part of that. So I'll be locked inside. I mean, literally locked, even though you could come out with those test books so they know in two hours you can't finish solving those mathematics and they tell you to finish it before they come back and i know my parents um mean once they say you understand they say what what they mean i can say well i am what i am today by the grace of god but god has used some people my parents first and foremost to instill early do you get so pastors can only preach to heart to what they've done to the foundation and all that to be. And then teachers in school or lecturers can only hard, but the parent basically. And then I remember that um, most of the things that we used were brand new. We, we didn't know, I didn't know there were things that were, maybe they were then, I didn't know. Tokumbo, um, things that somebody has worn before, all those kind of stuff, brand new. Uh, well, my parents, one of blessed memory, and um, that's my father, Esso Aufsayo, also known as, he always, was always called, well, still called um, Ekpe Young. That's his alias, he was a footballer. Um, a well-known footballer around that time. He was a man of structure, administration. He was a man of, uh, you know, you can be disciplined and not structure it. He structured it. So structured to the extent that I used to be 45 minutes early to school than the first person that will arrive in secondary school. My mother too, wonderful trainer, disciplined, and um, 
both choleric. So, but then they did what they could do, and then I'm grateful for that. I never heard about the movie until my own pastor spoke about it. I, I know I spoke about it to the extent that one of my daughters sent me three books on, um, that are like mafian books. So one of them is, uh, there's one, The Sicilian, there's, there's another one, Godfather. And I've watched that movie now, only God knows how many times. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it will be close to like 100 times. And then, you can't live in my house if you don't watch the movie, you don't know how to live. Now, Godfather movie just teach you how to relate with people, how to be sensitive to people's um, thoughts, especially of you, how to negotiate, how to reject opportunity that can be very, very disadvantageous or hazardous, how to um, knowing how to navigate this wicked world, perverse world, knowing how to really uh, wine and dine with devils. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, with wolves in sheep clothing or shepherd clothing. You get. It's just you being sensitive to certain things because there's no way people can successfully hide who they are. And then it, it, the movie also teaches about being relational, being, being, being passionate to help people. That one day you will need their help. Though God says we should help people without expecting anything in return, that's unconditional love, that's agape. So that's why when you watch movie, when I watch movie, I get some interpretation of scriptures, but it might not be detailed like that of scriptures. Jesus, God says we should help people unconditionally, not expecting anything back. Jesus died for us, not really expecting that. He knows we can be born again, but it's not everybody that will respond. Do you understand? It's unconditional. So, but the movie says, help people. You might need their help later. Do you understand? So there are a number of lessons there in the movie. Do you get what I'm saying? Uh -huh. If I'm not in the fivefold ministry, definitely I'm going to be a businessman and I'm going to be where things are happening. While I was in my 20s, it was oil and gas. I will be there and I had the opportunity to be there, which I, you know, deliberately declined. Um, probably I will have had or be co or co fund a startup or like two startups, or um, then from oil and gas, I could be doing that. Do you get what I'm saying? And so I will be where things are happening in and out of the country, making money, as in serious money, do you understand? As a cool Christian. And I will be serving effectively in a local church. Maybe like a projection, projecting God's word, you know, for a preacher, because uh, there are some that I just know often that it's easy for me to just quickly know where it is. Like that, you know, I will start somewhere that is strategic or protocol, you get, uh -huh. so then if I'm not born again, I will be bad, I'm sure. Because whatever I'm into, I'm into it fully. I will be a bado, baddest, do you understand? I will be drinking, I will be carrying babes or do. I'm not a baby woman, woman, person like that, but maybe one part time. And you can guess what kind of babes that, uh, you know, top notch. I mean, like the ones that you order for, not the ones that just jam on the streets. Bad stuff. You understand? That's why I always like bad guys, believing that uh, they can be better. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not far from them because I myself have the tendency to have been a bad guy. And I'll be making money. All right. You know, it's like when your husband says, it is, it is what it is. Now, so we see him. <laughs> now, so I see him too. I got married. And then, um, I'm no more married. And then, you know, marriage is meant to be like, See, death do you part, 
Uh, but there was no debt and then uh, we parted ways. Okay, what happened is um, not to speak long story, I finished school, went to serve, was led to go back to the school that uh, I graduated from to start a church. So I started a church, stayed there, stayed there from I think 2010, started work, you know, from around 2010, although officially inaugurated 2012. And then eventually, most of my generation ladies have passed, moved to Lagos, moved, I was just there pastoring much more younger people. So that's how I ended up with, uh, with a damsel, a bit much more younger than I, I am. And then that's 2017, got to meet, got married 2019, and then separated 2021. So the marriage lasted uh, barely one year, four months or five months. Let's say one and a half years, in summary, or approximately. So what happened? There was no consummation. There was no consummation. Um, um, what's responsible? Well. Uh, let me let me give you the dimension you just that will help you. There was no consummation, meaning that there was no sex. So, first month, second month, one year, no sex, one and a half years. Still, we parted, no sex. Uh, so, what could have happened? Was there no attraction? Was there this from who and from which place? There have been a lot of complex things we could ask. I loved her. I wanted. I was all over her and all that. And then though it was then I realized that there are certain things that are like signals, sensitive signs that I ignored. But you see, marriage is 100% sexual. Yeah, so um, did we consult people that matters? Yes. I don't want to mention their names, but there are people that matters. In fact, in the affairs of Christianity in this country, my pastor and his wife involved our marriage technical advisors involved and some other mentors. For me, I had to make sure that I knocked out the emotions, knocked out, do you understand? Uh, deflate, deflate the, the love balloon, what do you call it? Allow the butterflies to fly away, allow the, do you understand? Uh -huh that make sure that no cards, no cards are on the table again, no emotion and all that. So because of that, I had to withdraw. Do you get? She had to withdraw. I want to implore the audience to put their faith and their trust in God. Although the scripture says, believe his prophets too. Do you understand? So you understand, like I explained. Now in this case, um, it's beyond control. Can we not believe God? Can we not have faith for the other person to have attraction to the earth? Do you understand? To do this, to just, for God to just intervene and then, you know, earthquake showed up and angels are flying and then butterflies now comes into our heart and all that. What of if you should believe God and God says that it's not answering? Our own is to believe is God's you know, responsibility to answer. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why in Africa we shouldn't see pastors, quote and unquote, ask God who makes things happen. Say this pastor, when he speaks, his voice is so loud, his baritone, and then wonders happen. He doesn't say it's not like that. Or a pastor with about four or five policemen, it means he's very powerful. No. It's God that is all powerful. I like the way they took it because I'm, I myself am much more encouraged because the looks, it shows that to an extent there's a dimension of understanding they have, you know, which they showed or they've been showing the way they took it. It didn't affect us, it didn't affect the congregation, we increased. Since that time we increased, there are many more opportunities coming. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> so. 
marriage, number one. The second one is um, I, in terms of business, got into business a bit early, made money early as well, uh, good money. Um, because the ministry was in Ife, and then I was shortly between Lagos and Ife. Um, you remember, I always say that I left oil and gas job. I didn't even take it at all. But I was supposed to take it back then, in 2010, uh, to be paid half a million monthly. So I didn't even take it at all while I was seven. So but then I went into business and then I made some money because um, it's one thing to be called of God, it's another thing to apply wisdom for your economic stability. So I did, I was doing business alongside, I was fully into branding. So I was supposed to concretize it, but because of the shortening between Lagos and Ife, I just, it was affecting ministry at some point. So I had to now focus on the ministry at the expense of the business. At the point where I did that, I had decided to have a press, a digital press. And I got one or two investors. So we're to ship in machine from China, all right? And then also got some money from um, like a loan facility from a financial institution of which I have one of my top um, first cousins working as a top um, executive there, which will, I mean, be facilitated without any hazard. Um, because of the complexity of the whole thing and blah, blah, concentrating on that, pursuing that and then doing ministry, I had to forfeit one for the other. So, and you know ministry is caught to me, so forfeit that, you get. So, but then I know that there is a way I will have uh, still managed to simultaneously work the two together and at least set up that press, that digital press. Because I know by now, uh, to have served as one of the... Um, uh, uh, places that people can easily, you know, just intern and all that, learn. And then, and then uh, for some form of, um, in a way, economic stability and all that. So the third one is ministry. There are certain mistakes that are allowed in ministry so that you can um, uh, make future adjustments. I heard my pastor teaching and said that um, there is a particular church that went in different ways, four different ways, simply because the pastor of the church made four pastors out of the congregation. And then the church went in different ways, four different ways. Now, the only thing is that our own did not go in different ways, all right? It would have been better if for a long time I pastored alone. All right, I know circumstances that led to that, but then um, it gave people who um, I gave people who were not mature enough to handle pastoral authority too heavily by getting people into ministry leadership and core of the ministry um, early um, um, in our ministry. So I should have pastored for a long time. And then people who wants to really fumble, will fumble easily as stewards or maybe just being the head of a team or head of a department rather than being like a, an associate or um, um, a pastor of a center or something, something like that. So we're grateful for failures of the past, grateful for the blessings of the past, faithful for the friends we have made, relationships, grateful for uh, uh, spiritual relationships, grateful for uh, my pastors, grateful for mentors, fathers, here and there. You get grateful for communion Christian centers, uh, members, stewards, leaders, ministers, who over the years have been very faithful, uh, lawyer, dependent, reliable, hardworking, diligent, grateful for family, my sisters, my mother, and uh, my late father, and my spiritual parents, my biological parents, late uh, Mr. Sandy Olutaya Ousayo, then my mom, 
still very much alive. Mrs. Titila Ayobami Aobisayo. And then my uh, spiritual parents, my pastors, Pastor and uh, Pastor Mrs. Uh, Adeyinka Adepoju Oyemade of the Covenant Nation. Uh, contribute so immensely and then um, a lot of people don't know this um, at the same time I want to be grateful for although we don't have a one-on-one -on -one relation I just relate with uh, one of his core central executive member as um, um, there are other ministers though but there's that supernatural for, from that lineage Reverend Chris um, Oyakilome I really learnt a lot from the pattern of his ministry, teaching and all that. So, and there are other men that God has used to be a blessing to me, uh, mentors, uh, wonderful people. Um, there are others. Yeah, because if I go further, I will continue to now mention names. Uh -huh. So, yeah, so that's, that's, let's just put it at that and I appreciate it. When it comes to where um, the ministry in the next 10 years, many centers, apostolic dimension of the ministry, especially the church apostolic dimension, the ministry apostolic dimension, how do heavy outdoor events, crusades, so be one, and then planting of strategic church centers. Do you understand? In commercial and capital cities of the world, as God has. Uh, puts in our mind. Did you get it? And I trust God and believe God for multi millionaires being raised from within the church. Trust God for financial giants, political juggernaut people who are captains of industries, solid career and businessmen. Imagine from within these next 10 years. Do you understand? And then we can all partner together and advance the frontiers of the kingdom. First and foremost, I want to bless all of you. You are blessed, you are lifted. Your sea soul is blessed. Everyone who participates in this, watch for the next two, three, four years. In this, within that 10 years window, what God will do with your life. And those who don't even have to participate, but their heart is there or you couldn't participate enough as you wish. Yeah, it's, this is just for theater. You have many opportunities to do that later. But then I am trusting God for your life that things will tremendously increase and uh, wonderful things. Uh, settlement in every area, multiplications, kingdom expressions and manifestations. And so I charge you um, that you like Paul told the Corinthians, uh, follow me or imitate me as I imitate Christ, you see. You can have many instructors, but you have only one father. Um, you have only one father. And whoever is sent to do things on my behalf, they know they are supposed to show the, my ways in the way of Christ and not their own personal ways. And then I want to encourage you that you should keep the faith. Don't forget that we are sent to help people discover, pursue and fulfill God's given purpose and destiny uh, that he has given to them. Uh, discover yours, pursue it. Within this whole grand or general agenda of God or mandate that he has given unto us, find your place and the function there. Uh, you might be maybe outdoor event, you might be um, regular stewardship, you might be, yours might be to volunteer and work in church office, you might be to even be a staff and be paid, your, whichever God, whatever God has given you opportunity or pressed or impressed on your heart to do, do it faithfully, do it with all your ability. This communion Christian center is beyond a man, it's God's mandate. Is beyond me, it's beyond you. It includes all of us. We are all stakeholders in this with the Holy Spirit. 
um, let's let's make sure that from your hand from my hand we work things the best way it should work and let's keep the faith let's not be hypocritical let's not um, be babies when it comes to spiritual things babies are the ones that are envious full of strife easily offended uh, full of prejudices all kinds of do you understand so um, let's focus on Christ the author and the finisher of our faith laying aside every weight and sins that easily uh, beset us so that's my charge briefly to you if you have been offended by any forgive them and if it's me that I've offended you of which I will still offend you so just forgive and if you offend me too I will tell you so God bless you <laughs>